In the last decade and a half, it has become infinitely easier to obtain exactly what you're looking for by ways of a couple of keystrokes. The internet has made it all too simple to use a computer to change reality. The abundance of information is merely a search engine away, to the point where it's hard to imagine life any different. Yet, a generation ago, words like streaming and torrent were meaningless, save for conversations on water. People met face to face to conduct software swap parties, trading games and applications on sharpie labeled five and a quarter inch floppies. Of course, most of the time these meets were away for frugal community minded individuals to trade popular games like King's Quest or Manic Mansion amongst themselves. However, a few early programming talents designed their own computer games to trade amongst their circles of acquaintances who in turn would pass it on. If fun and well designed, an independently developed game had its place among the officiates across the country. Think of it like the 80s equivalent of a viral video. However, Pale Luna was never circulated outside the San Francisco Bay Area. All known copies of it have been long disposed of. All computers that have ever run the game are now nothing more than debris buried under layers of filth and polyurethane. This fact is attributed to the rather truce design choices by the programmer of Pale Luna. It was a text adventure in the vein of Zork, or the lurking horror. At the time, the said genre was swiftly going out of the fashion. Upon booting up the program, the player was presented a screen that was almost completely blank, except for the text. You are in a dark room. Moonlight shines through the window. There is gold in the corner, as well as a shovel and a rope. There is a door to the east. Command? So began the game that one writer said as enigmatic, nonsensical, and completely unplayable, as the only commands the game would accept were Picking up gold, pick up shovel, pick up rope, open door, and go east. The player was soon presented with the following. Reap your reward. Pale Luna smiles at you. You are in a forest. There are paths to the north, west, and east. Command? What quickly infuriated the players was the bugginess of the second screen onwards as only one of the directional decisions would be the correct one. For example, any direction other than north would lead the system to freezing, requiring the operator to hard reboot the entire computer. Further, any subsequent screens would merely repeat the above text, the only things changing being the directions available. The standard text adventure commands appear to be useless. The only acceptable non-movement related prompts were use gold, which caused the game to display the message, not here. Using the command, use shovel, it brought up, not now. And using the command, use rope, the text would prompt, you've already used this. Most who played the game processed a couple of screens before becoming fed up by having to constantly reboot and tossing the disc. And discussing and writing off the experience as a shoddy programming force. However, there is one thing that is true for the world of computers that remains true no matter what era. Some people who use them have way too much time on their hands. A young man by the name of Michael Nevins decided to see if there's more to Pale Luna than what met the eye. Five hours and 33 screens of trial and error, and unplugging computer cords later, he finally managed to make the game display different text. The text in the new area read, Pale Luna smiles wide. There are no paths. Pale Luna smiles wide. The ground is soft. Pale Luna smiles wide. Here. Command? It was another hour still until Nevin stumbled upon the proper combination of phrases to make the game pr progress any further. Dig hole, drop gold, then fill hole. This caused the screen to display, congratulations, 
0.24248 and negative 121.4431, upon which the game ceased to accept any commands, requiring the user to reboot one last time. After some deliberation, Nevins concluded that the number refers to the lines of latitude and longitude. The coordinates led to a sprawling forest in the nearby Lyson Volcanic Park. Since he possessed more free time than sense, he vowed to see Paluna to its end. Stay armed with a compass, a map, and a shovel, he navigated the park's trails. He noted with amusement as each turn he took corresponded roughly with those he took in the game. Though he initially regretted bringing the cumbersome digging tool on a mere hunch, but the past similarities all but confirmed his suspicions that the journey would end with the eccentric's buried treasure. Out of breath after a tricky fumble with the coordinates, he was pleasantly surprised when he quite literally stumbled onto an uneven patch of dirt. Shelving as excited as he was, it would be an understatement to say that he was taken aback when his heavy strokes uncovered the badly decomposed head of a blonde-haired little girl. Nevins promptly reported the situation to the authorities. The girl was identified as Karen Paulson, reported missing to the San Diego police over a year and a half prior. Efforts were made to track down the programmer of Pale Luna, but the nearly anonymous gray area in which the software swapping community operated inescapably led to many dead ends. Collectors have been known to offer upwards up to six figures for an authentic copy of the game. The rest of Karen's body was never found.